Hi everybody, welcome to Cake Tastic Cakes. It's Jen and I'm going to show you how to make Blaze from Blaze and the Monster Machines in this arena cake. So if you find this video helpful, please like and subscribe and we're going to begin. All right, I'm going to start with a cake. I just made a eight inch round cake. It stands about four inches tall, you know, right around there. Not, not too specific, but right about four inches tall. And to decorate the cake, I'm going to start by making the ramp in the background that you see in the little picture in the corner there. So my black gum base is rolled out nice and thin. And I'm using this little dinner plate. Actually, I think it might be a saucer plate to just carve out the ramp, <laughs> to just make a nice round ramp shape there. And as you can see in the little corner there, they have it kind of tapered at each side. I took some yellow gum paste and I'm using all gum base because this is going to stand up. So I want it to be nice and firm and dry and hard. And I rolled it out again, pretty darn thin. And I rolled out some, you know, little rectangles that you see there. These are going to become the structural support for the ramp that I'm making. It's just visually structurally supportive. It's not going to be actually structurally supportive. So I have four big thick rectangles as you see there. Well, they're kind of big compared to this little guy I cut out. And I have them going straight up and down as you see. I tried to make them symmetrical, but I really should have done a better job. You know, you'll see in a minute why. And using these really skinny little pieces of rectangles, I just start making some X's between the big thick bars. And I'm making sure they match up in the corners where they touch. And I just go straight across. I'm just putting a little bit of water down and then just going straight across again. And as you can see, the one follows the other one below it. So I guess you could have just made like a webbing effect at the very beginning and then put the big pieces across, but I did it this way. So that's what I'm showing you. Yeah, makes sense, right? And once you get it all done in the middle, then don't forget to do the sides. Again, try to keep your angles going the right way. That one was a little sloppy. And you can kind of see here too how it's not as symmetrical as I thought it would be. Yeah, the sides don't quite match up. This is brown gum paste that I rolled into a big long Tootsie Roll. I'm flattening out with my paddle, flattening out with my rolling pin, but I don't want to make it flat. I still want it to have a little bit of rounded edge in the front. I'm trimming it kind of in half. It's a little sloppy, but that was the idea that I was going for there. And I'm putting a little bit of water down and then I'm going to lay it across the top. So the rounded part is facing forward. This is to emulate his ramps and the jumps that they do in the arena. You know, they have those big hills that they go up and down and some of them are structured. So that's what I'm doing. Now I put that aside and I'm moving on to fondant. I'm covering the cake now that I've got. So I'm using fondant here. This is just some light blue fondant, roll it out nice and long. And I have my little roller there set for three inches because my cake turned out to be just like a little bit over three inches. So I'm just making a big long strip and I'm gonna wrap it around the outside of my cake. And I'm sorry, I thought I had the footage for it, but I don't know, my battery died or something, or I lost it. But here it is <laughs> from the fridge, nice and cold and wrapped around. So I got that part, I don't know. Anyway, anyway, moving on. Pretend you saw the whole thing. I just wrapped it around, that's all I did. Okay, so now I'm taking some more green fondant and I am using my Atico mat there. And I'm only dropping the name because it's actually a really nice mat. It has a, it's made of silicone so it doesn't stick and you don't have to put anything down first. Pretty handy. Anyway, I rolled out the green to past eight inches and it's all wiggly and wobbly because I wanted it to be that way. I wasn't looking for perfect. I was kind of going for, you know, just more of a grassy field type of thing, even though I know the, the arena is not full of grass. I thought it looked better than just, you know, brown <laughs> on top of brown. Now I am going to be doing the outside of the cake again. I'm going back to the blue. This is some orange that I've got. And if you, I'm sure you're familiar with the arena, if you have are making this cake, uh, it is like this big orange and blue structure, like orange metal rods and beams and cross beams with blue windows kind of in between. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm doing here. So I've got my big, thick, again, thicker orange standing beams. This is going to be a lot like the ramp that, I, that we made. And I'm putting those just vertically up and down. I'm leaving a little bit of a bigger space in the center front of my cake because I'm going to do the doorway that it kind of has there too. So I've got the other ones going all the way around. I'm putting some of the same thickness pieces down on the bottom in between the uh, little vertical pieces there. 
And I should have measured it. I could have measured it. I don't think it looks bad that I didn't measure it. But if you do measure it, you know, just cut it all the same distance and everything. And you'll be fine. Otherwise, wing it like I did. Throw caution to the wind. <laughs> Live dangerously with your cakes. Got to find your, your wild adventures somewhere, right? Okay. So I'm using smaller pieces now. Just again, like the ramp of orange gum paste. Skinnier little cross pieces. Doing the same thing as we did before. Just making an X on there. Sticking on the gum, on the fondant, excuse me, not gum paste, fondant. Cutting it with my knife, trimming it off so it all fits. And there you go. So you got your structure all around it. And again, I left that front opening open on purpose. So here are the, I guess, mufflers. <laughs> I don't know what they are. Sorry if I'm getting it wrong. I think they're mufflers that are on either side of the opening. So I've got some gray gum paste this time. Again, it's back to gum paste. I, I switch back and forth. This is because, again, I wanted to hold its shape, stay nice and firm, and not get all squishy or soggy on me. I'm trimming it off a little bit, because as you can see, I made two big old logs out of it, just so it'll sit up flat against the cake a little bit nicer. I'm using the back of my paintbrush to just hollow out some holes, because, again, I'm assuming it's a muffler. If there are mufflers, they've got just kind of like those little, little pits in them. I don't know why, so I'm not even going to pretend to try. So yes, again, do it on the one, do it on the other, and there you go. Now we're going to put the little, again, exhaust pipe, I don't know, on the top. So I've got my skinny little pieces of gray rolled out. I hollowed the end with my uh, handle of my paintbrush, as you see. Now I'm using a piece of dried spaghetti, a little bit of water, and then I'm going to thread that exhaust pipe right on the top and just bend it forward a little bit with the hole showing at the top. Now it's, yeah, it's an exhaust pipe, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. So yes, I'm going to do the one, do the same thing on the other one, you know, hollow it out, stick it on there. And then I realized that it kind of sits in like these little flower pot things. So I took some brown gum paste. I think this was gum paste. Yeah, this was gum paste. And just cut out a nice circle, nice brown circle to put on top of it, or excuse me, to put under it and then put that on top. And now it's just outlined nicely. I'm like, you know, just give it another little detail. I just trim off the extra in the back. So again, it'll lay up nicely against the cake. Add some water to the back of my muffler. Stick it on there. And there you go. You got your pseudo arena going there. All right, moving on. Now I'm making basically a yam out of my brown gum paste here. I'm just using brown gum paste in this instance just because I had it already on hand and I didn't feel like mixing it in fondant. You could do fondant with this part as well if you want. It's no big deal. Again, I was just being lazy. So yes, that's me. All right, I'm kind of pinching up the front to make it a little bit thicker. Kind of give it more of a ridge or an outline. And I have it shaped like a banana or a crescent or a sweet potato, if you will. And I'm going to just plop it down on top of the cake and it's going to follow the curve of the cake. And in the back, when we add the ramp to it, it's going to kind of simulate sort of a track. <laughs> or I mean, it's totally completely going to look like the track. Now I've got some orange gum paste that I happen to have. Again, just using gum paste because it was already mixed and I can be lazy sometimes. And I'm just cutting out these little triangle wedges here to make the arrows that appear in some of the tracks. Um, just indicating which way to go. It's just another little detail to add because why not, right? So I made four of them and I'm going to put two on each side. You're going to see that in just a moment. So there are the two on the one side trying to make the arrows, you know, look a little more arrowy and less wobbly wibbly and put two on the other side just because why not, right? Just for fun. Okay, now the, my ramp had time to sit and harden up so I stick it on and we got to move on to Blaze now. Okay, to begin our Blaze monster truck, I'm going to start by making his tires. I've rolled up some black gum paste, as you can see, pretty darn thick. It's about three quarters of an inch. And I found a good size circle cutter and cut out four of them, four tires. Now I'm going to take my tires and first I'm going to admire them. And then I'm going to jam them with the end of my rolling pin. I'm going to kind of press down in the center to hollow it out. And then I'm going to try to make sure that I centered them when I pressed down in the centers because they were a little off kilter. So I had to go back and kind of readdress it, fix them up a little bit. I am pressing down on the outside too to get them back into shape because they did smoosh out a little bit also. Just a little FYI there. Now I'm taking some orange gum paste. I cut out some big circles and I'm going to 
press it into the center of the little wells that I made. It didn't come out very even, but I wasn't too worried about it because I'm going to line them in some red gum paste. So it should, in theory, you know, tidy it up, cover it up, make it look a little neater. So I'm not too worried about the edges yet. I'm putting another little red piece of gum paste, a little red circle in the center there. I made lots of circles so far. So far it's pretty easy. And once again, just kind of pressing them into place, make sure they're as, you know, as good as you can get them. Now here comes the lining part. I have my red gum paste once again. Roll it out real long and thin, cut long skinny stripes just like that. And then after putting some water around the edge at the top, I'm going to line my tires with the thin stripes of red. Anything extra is just gonna get trimmed off. So try to place it carefully. This was where things kind of really went off the tracks for me. It turns out I can't freehand a circle <laughs> as well as I thought I could. So maybe if you take your time with those orange circles and make them a little neater, outlining them will become easier and make for a neater outcome. Cause I spent a lot of time, as you can see, I got the four tires, this is last one, finished up and they're a little rough. So I had to go back and tweak and everything and try to try to make them a little rounder, a little smoother. All right, now to make the treads on the tires, I have the gum paste rolled out pretty darn thin. It's a little thicker, um, you know, but not too thick. You still want it on the pretty skinny side. So I cut it as thick as the tires. You saw me hold it up and measure it. And now I'm using this heart shaped cutter that I have to make the treads. I'm just trimming out kind of little bottom of the wet little crescents, you know, from the heart shape. You could use a circle cutter if you have that. I just chose to use this because it's a bit more pointy, kind of more triangular. And I'm just cutting out my little bat shapes, little, little wedges, one after the other after the other. And I cut a whole bunch of them, so I'm not going to show it to you because it was boring. And now once you have them on, then you're going to start sticking them to your tires. Now, you have to be careful which direction your tread is going because the tires are gonna face outwards. So you're gonna have two facing one way, two facing another. The tread on the tires always faces forward, like your little little bats or little arrows are always pointing down to the, toward the ground in front of them. So you're going to have two tires, you know, with the, uh, as you see like right here, the tires, the tread is kind of going counterclockwise. And then you're gonna have two tires with it going clockwise. So be careful of that. All right, we're moving on to Blaze's body here. I took some red gum paste once again, kind of made a rectangle out of it as you see. And I'm trying to make the back end come up while the front end goes down a bit and I have it sectioned off in the center. I am trying to do like, he's got kind of like, um, like an old you know, 50s or 60s Cadillac kind of fins on the side look to him. So that's what I'm trying to do in the back there. You can see, see how it's kind of going? And in the front, it tapers down, but you can't let it go down too low. He's got to have a nice blunt front to him because you have to leave room for his face. He needs the eyes, he needs the mouth and the grill. To, so you got to leave some room. He was kind of actually difficult. Now I'm putting a very thin little rectangle there down on the center of his hood. And on top of that, I'm putting another kind of thicker rectangle. Um, the, the first one I put down flares out a little bit, but it does not go to the edges in the front of the hood. And this one on top is, I don't know what it is. I don't know cars. It's like a vent or something, I guess. I don't know. But just be aware that those pieces exist and he should have those little ridges in, in the top of his hood. Now this piece is going to be the spoiler on the back of him because what monster truck with fins doesn't have a little mini spoiler. So I cut the rectangle, cut it or at an angle so it was more like a triangle. And now I'm putting two little tiny rectangles. You see them? They're cute little triangles, or excuse me, rectangles. Those are going to be the little brackets that will hold up my fin. See, see how it all comes together? My little fin there. Now I am moving on to um, the roll bar, I guess it is. I cut, again, another rectangle. I'm going to cut the sides of it kind of wedged upward because it kind of tapers in like that, you see? and I'm going to hollow it out. So right now I'm just kind of measuring it out, getting the feel of it. Once I have it to the right size, I'm going to just trim out the center very carefully. Now it's going to end up making it sag in the center because until the gum paste sets up and gets firm, it's not going to support the weight and it's gonna get a little droopy. So you're gonna see in a second, once I put it into place like that, you get the feel of it there. I'm gonna end up putting a little piece of paper towel in it to support it. You'll see that in a moment. This is going to be the windshield of my blaze. So I just have my red rectangle. 
I'm kind of hollowing it out carefully in the center there. You see I'm still leaving a ridge around the outsides so that when I put the piece of blue gum paste in the center to be the windshield, it will sit recessed into it. It won't sit on top of it and stick out. Now that did displace some of the red. It made it kind of change shape, so I had to retrim it to clean it up. I got my blue rolled out really thin. I cut off two edges just so I could have something to work with. And then I map it out, cut it out, add some water, stick it in. Just like that. There we go. Now he's got his windshield. And that's going to sit right in that original little ridge that I had made. Just like that. You see, it's all coming together now. And once I have everything placed, then I'm going to start actually putting water down to make everything stick. And there's that little droop that's ha happening there. So once I put the spoiler on, a little bit of water, you're going to see right there. There's a little piece of paper towel. I just folded it up tight, wedged it on in there, and I'll remove it once it's dry. All right, now moving on to his face. I'm hollowing out a couple little eye sockets. They're more of a square shape. So be aware of that. So I started with a circle just kind of pressed in and now I'm trying to square it out with the smaller end of my ball tool there. I didn't do terrible, but you know, take your time with it. <laughs> I'm using my veining tool to make his mouth. His mouth is very long, goes across the bumper. And now I'm trying to make a couple of ridges that are going to be where the grill is of the front of him. So remember when I said you gotta leave yourself a lot of space on that front, even though it tapers down, he can't be too small or you won't have room for everything. This is why he's got a lot going on on the front of that little truck. Okay, now I outlined around his grill a little bit, you saw, and now I'm filling in the eyes with some white gum paste. Once again, just pressing it in, using a little bit of water to make it stick, trying to make sure it's still maintaining most of its square shape. I put a little thin, thin roll of black into the gully that I made for his mouth and just pressing that in smooth it out going to add a little bit more black now for the grill itself so I'm, everything is rolled really thin here and I've cut little rectangles I put it on there I'm just going to trim off whatever doesn't fit right so and I'm also going to kind of follow the how it tapers down as well so I'm not going to have a perfect rectangle it's going to be you know the angles are going to be cut onto the edges so I've got the two of those there Got the black in his mouth. Now I'm going to add another little tiny rectangle onto the front of that top piece there, whatever that is. And now I'm going to start adding white details. All right, this long little, very, very thin crescent piece, very long skinny piece is gonna go in his mouth to be his teeth because monster trucks, as we all know, have perfect teeth. Like they're just perfectly white, perfectly symmetrical. It, they have beautiful smiles, it's just insane. I'm going to start adding the little white details to his fin, as you can see there, or his spoiler, excuse me. It's just little teeny tiny triangles, one on each side, just like the one you can see there. I'm going to put another long skinny little triangle, very thin, very long on either side of that top, whatever that is, exhaust, vent, I don't know. And yeah, there you go. Okay. So now the white is done. Oh, that one needed a little tweaking. Sorry, I forgot about that. Okay, now I'm going to say the white is done. And you can see I also outlined the front of that little grill thing, vent thing on top of his hood. Okay, now I've added his blue eyes, pretty blue eyes. I'm going to add a couple balls of black gum paste for the pupils in his eyes. Now make sure you don't cover too much of the blue. It's probably like a 50-50 ratio. And he has a lot of white that shows around his eyes too. So be careful of that. And as you saw, and I talked through, I added a couple little balls of white for highlights. These are his little flame decals on the side because what would Blaze be without his little fire? I cut kind of like a circle, but then gave it three tendrils kind of coming out, almost like a jellyfish or something with one long one on the top and then they get a little bit smaller. Stick them on the side, you know, press them down, make them a little bit more wavy, a little more fiery than your straight up cuts and it will be perfect. All right, now I'm going to add a couple fenders around the tire wells. I just have some red gum paste once again, rolled it out pretty thin. This is on the thinner side, and I cut real long, skinny, skinny little rectangles out of it, and just using some water, press it up against the side. So now you can see with the tire how it's all going to come together, right? Okay, we're still not done with Blaze. I have four balls of red gum paste. Now I am taking each ball, and I'm pressing it down into the countertop that I'm working on but keeping the rest of it more ball-like. And those are gonna be the spotlights that go on his roll bar. 
So I'm doing the four of them, pressing down on the one side, keeping the rest round. I'm going to take some white gum paste, cut out four little tiny circles, and I'm going to stick them on those flat parts that are smooshed down against the surface of the counter. So those are going to become the, the spotlights. <laughs> it's going to be flat in the front, rounded in the bottom. They're all going to go up next to each other. And when you put them on top of his roll bar there, they actually look pretty cool. I gotta say, I was happy with how this one, this little part came out. It's a tiny little detail, but it really helps. And they're so wiggly and crooked. As you can see, they're kind of like, you know, my kid's teeth. So use the knife, press up against it, and then it straightens them all out. I'm using a orange food color marker to just draw some flames over the yellow. I did it on both sides. And now our blaze part is done. We're gonna move on to the, I don't even know, the lifts, I guess, between the tires and his body. So I've got two eight inch lollipop sticks. I cut them in half, so now I've got four four inches. And I'm taking gray gum paste, rolling it over top of the lollipop stick and pinching off the extra all to one side. So I'm pressing down on it pretty hard to try to get as much of the excess off to one side as I can and then I trim it off with my knife, roll it out, you know, again, making it as thin as possible. I'm going to use the knife there to trim off the extra off of each end because honestly, he's still going on top of a cake. It's not gonna be real tall, but you do need to have a little bit of lift there. So that's what I'm doing, giving myself some room, some wiggle room, if you will. I'm gonna show you again on this one here, on this piece of lollipop stick as well thread a big wad of gum paste through it, roll it on the counter so it all pushes and mushes and pinch it off to one side, trim the excess off with your knife, and then roll it and kind of clean it up. Anything extra, pinch it off, trim it off, don't go too crazy or you will go through and end up hitting your lollipop stick and have to start over. And if you do, it's no big deal, you just have to start over. Trim off the excess off each end and then you should be good. Now I'm going to put I don't know what it is. I don't know trucks. I'm sorry, guys. The coil that goes around his suspension or his lift. I rolled out some red, really long and thin, as you saw. I painted the whole gray with water with my paintbrush. And I just started at the top and twisted my way down. So it looks pretty cool. It looks really nice. So once again, take your red gum paste, roll it really, really thin, long and skinny. Paint that silver you got on there, that gray, with the water all over. And you gotta be a little bit liberal because you don't want your coil to slip or slide. Start at the top and then just twisty, twisty. Twist it, gotta fix it because sometimes your twists get uneven. And then all the way down, take it all the way down, trim off the extra, there you go. All right, now that we've got our tires done, we've got blaze done, we've got our little suspension systems done, it is time to put this all together. And I don't know if I mentioned it, but the tires and blaze will need like a full day to sit before you can put it together. So don't put any weight on it. Lay the tires down flat to let them dry and harden. You got to give yourself time when you make this decoration. All right, what I am doing now is I'm taking my tires and you see how I had mentioned before about the way the tread goes. You have to have two of them going clockwise, two going counterclockwise. This is why. So when you put it all together, it all looks proper and makes sense. So I had stood them up, so I found a way that they would all stand very nicely and comfortably facing the right way. Now I'm taking some gray gum paste. I rolled it out thick, as you saw. Actually, I just pressed it kind of thick. And I just cut out some gray rectangle wedges. Those are going to go into the center of the back of the tire. I'm going to take the suspension that I made, trim off some of that excess lollipop stick on the bottom, and I'm going to shove it on into our little square or rectangle we got there. I trim it down so it's the same length as the tire. I don't want it going anywhere past the tire. This way, Blaze will sit its weight not only on that little stick of suspension, but also on the tires themselves. So he'll be nicely supported. I do it for the front and the back on the same side. I'm just using the one suspension. I just kind of cut it in half, as you see, with my little clippers there. And I have it so that it goes at an angle. So the suspension doesn't go straight up. It's going to go up and toward the center. So more towards the center of Blaze's body. I'm going to do the same thing now for the other set of tires. Make sure you're careful which way you angle them. Now when you stand them up all together, they're going to end up facing toward the center from the center of the tire. Make sure you don't put it too low. It's supposed to go from the center into the center of Blaze's body. You see? See how that all just kind of comes together? And we made the two of them, the two suspensions, so it all works. And when you sit them on top, there you go, you got Blaze. 
Now let's stick him on the cake. Again, he has to have time to sit. So you might want to make Blaze a day or two in advance, like seriously a day or two. Now, when you're ready, put the tires on the cake however you want to pose them. I had him following along the track. You could make it not following along the track. Do a different track. I don't care. You know, do whatever you want. But position your tires. Put your little Blaze truck on top. And there you go. You've got yourself an awesome Blaze truck in his own arena. So, I hope you found this video helpful. Again, please like and subscribe because that really does help me out. I've got a ton of other videos out there, so please take a look at those as well. And as always, thank you for watching Cake Tastic Cakes.